Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for being here. Today we're talking about gear I never should have bought. <laughs> I'm not saying that you shouldn't have bought it. That's why I said I should never have bought it in the title. Uh, so some of this gear may actually work for you. Some of it you may actually have. So if you own it, don't be upset. I'm not saying you should throw it in the garbage at all. I'm just saying it doesn't work for me, how I backpack, the style of backpacking that I do, the places that I go, just that kind of stuff. Um, so it is good gear for the most part. There's one piece of gear I'm gonna show you right out the gate that is literally the worst piece of gear in human history and no one should buy it. <laughs> it's actually kind of comical. But other than that, keep that in mind before you start typing in the comments and telling me how wrong I am. This is an air pillow. <laughs> Look at it, it's got a piece of down on it. Must have been in the wrong bin. This is an actual air pillow. Uh, no one should buy this this particular air pillow ever. And I've stopped using air pillows altogether. This is literally the worst pillow in human history. Don't buy it. Anyway, now, before you get mad at me, cause I tell people to buy this still, it is the Trekology air pillow. Uh, the reason I tell people to buy this is because it's just inexpensive. It's like 15, maybe $20 and it's really lightweight and it does a decent job for what it is. However, you will not get as good of sleep, or at least I don't get as good of sleep on this as the other thing that I use now. And if you follow my channel, you already know what it is. It is the Thermarest compressible, <laughs> the Thermarest compressible pillow. This is actually a real pillow and it weighs about twice the weight of the Trekology, but I have been preaching about this pillow for quite some time now. It is like sleeping on your pillow at home. Very similar. It's not super stiff. It has just the right amount of cushion on it. It doesn't feel like it goes super flat. It's not, you know, real ultra bulky. And it compresses actually pretty small. And for me, it's way worth it to bring something like this because my sleep is so important to me and I wanna have a good hike the next day and sleeping on this, I really do feel like I'm sleeping on my pillow at home and it's got this really nice soft outer part to it that really feels like an actual pillowcase. So that's really nice too. So this is a great pillow. I wish I would've bought this one. I should have never bought the air pillow. All right, the next thing on the list is uh, a synthetic sleeping bag. So if you follow my channel at all, or if you've been following it for quite some time, you may think that I've never slept in a synthetic uh, synthetic sleeping bag. I have. As a matter of fact, it was the very first sleeping bag I ever bought. Um, and it's actually very similar to this one right here. Uh, this isn't it, because I can't even find the one I started with. But this is like one of those sleeping bags, and the one that I used was like one of those sleeping bags that you would see at pretty much any, like, box store, big box store, like a Walmart, like in the car camping section. It's like one of those rectangled sleeping bags, very heavy, very bulky, and not very warm at all. You know, they'll say they're rated to like 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and then you sleep in them at like 60 degrees and somehow you're cold. Uh, it, they're just terrible, absolutely terrible. As a matter of fact, I don't like any synthetic sleeping bag. And I can already hear people saying, and they're ready to type in the comments how you know they're better in wet weather and how even if they wet out they're going to be better or in certain environments it's obviously the way to go but um, i've only had one time that my down bag uh wetted out and it was completely my fault i will link that video right up here for you guys it's because i didn't have a dry bag inside of my backpack every other time since then i've never had a problem so here is here's the bag that i switched to um, and it is my absolute favorite sleeping bag of all time. Now, this is super expensive. There are alternatives to this bag on the market. This is the Western Mountaineering Alpenlite. This is a $600 sleeping bag. Now, I'm not saying that anybody should go out and buy a $600 sleeping bag unless you go backpacking a lot, like I do, and then it's worth it to you. Um, I'm just saying I never should have bought a synthetic bag. And the reason I love the down bag is because it is so much lighter weight. It is so much more compactable. 
and it is way warmer than any synthetic bag I've ever used. Anything that's gonna try to equal this, this warmth out of a, that's a synthetic bag is gonna weigh a lot more and it's gonna be a lot more bulky. And so for that reason, I love the down sleeping bag. The reason I like this particular sleeping bag, it's so nice, it's built like a tank, it is extremely roomy, and the warmth to weight ratio is probably the best on the market that I've found. This is comfort rated at 20 degrees Fahrenheit, and it only weighs two pounds. Okay, the next item on the list that I should have never bought is one of those foldable sleeping pads. Before you chew me out in the comments, this does have a place, I get it. Some people think these are like the greatest thing ever, and for a couple of reasons. They're cheap, they're very lightweight, and they are bomb proof, so you're not gonna like poke a hole or rip a hole in it. Okay, that's awesome. I, however, can't stand these things because they're super bulky and they are the most uncomfortable sleeping pad ever. Anybody that thinks these are comfortable, I, I don't know how you think they're comfortable. They are nothing more than something that's gonna take the bite out of the ground. And the warmth that you get out of these is very, very little. I've probably slept on this pad maybe six times ever. It's been sitting in a bin for probably five years, and I don't think I've used it since then. Now I will use a uh, foam pad similar to this if I want to add extra warmth to my other version of a pad that I'm gonna show you. Um, or if I just wanna like put it underneath uh, that version of a pad so it doesn't slip around or something like that. But that's really the only reason. I wish I never would have bought this. I should have never bought this. I'm not saying you shouldn't have bought this, but definitely me. I wish I never would have bought this. Okay, so what I have to replace that, that what I've been using and love is an actual air pad. You know, this is, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this. You guys know uh, I love my air pads and a, a lot of people do and they're just, they speak for themselves. Uh, anything by Nemo or anything by Thermarest is gonna be fantastic. So this is just the Nemo Tensor insulated pad. This is the Thermarest Uberlite. I love both of these pads. They're both fantastic. They're so close in what they can do. Just one's a little bit warmer than the other. This one's a little bit more comfortable than this one. However, this one's still great. Um, anyway, but the downside to an air pad really is that it can break. It can pop and you could deflate your pad in the middle of the night. I haven't had that happen to me yet, which is a miracle, uh, but that's probably because I take really good care of them and I baby them while I'm out there. And if I know I'm gonna be in an environment where there's gonna be, let's say, um, you know, cactus or something that could poke a hole in it or rocks or something, I'm really, really careful with it. So I love sleeping on an air pad because it makes me feel like I'm sleeping on an actual mattress at home and it's just so much more comfortable. For me, I never should have bought that foldable foam piece of garbage. Okay, next on the list, one second. This isn't my backpack, this is my son's backpack, and I sold all of my backpacks that were similar to this, or I gave them to people, but I never should have bought <laughs> a backpack that was way too much organization. So when I first started out backpacking, I bought a backpack very similar to that, that had just pockets and bells and whistles, and it weighed way too much, it had too much going on, and I kept actually losing stuff in it. I would think that it was helping me because it had so many pockets and I could just put things here, and put things there, and I would just know where everything was to the point where I knew where nothing was. And so what I did was I just got a backpack that was very simple. And it's the backpack. If you follow my channel, you know I use a lot. <laughs> it's my favorite backpack of all time. It is the Hyperlite Mountain Gear. Uh, this is the Junction, but it is a very simple backpack. So it's essentially, just a big bag. Now, the reason I don't like all that organization is, one, it adds a lot of weight, so this other backpack from Hyperlite is much, much lighter weight. And two, all I've gotta do is put a ditty bag in it. So how I don't lose things is anything small from, you know, well, let's just dump it out and see what's in here from my last trip. Okay, I've got my potable aqua tabs, I got an air pump, got some charging cables, chapstick, head net, toothbrush, repair tape, stuff for my camera, you know, things like that. So 
anything small that I could potentially put in a pocket of this super organized backpack, I just throw it in this bag. And if I think I've lost something, all I gotta remember is, oh, it's in my ditty bag. And then I know exactly where it's at. So all of my small gear just goes right in here. All of the stuff that I could, you know, put in an organized pocket on some other big backpack, I just shove it right in here. Now, anything else that may be too big for this ditty bag, let's say uh, maybe you've got a big water filter system like a gravity filter or maybe a ground cloth or something like that. I just put that stuff on the outside of my backpack. Most of that stuff is stuff I don't really care if it gets wet anyway. So then I know exactly where that is as well. Okay, before I get to the last piece of gear, I wanna just let you know that all of the gear that I'm talking about here that I do use now currently that's replaced stuff that I shouldn't have used, you can find it over at backcountry.com. I have never found a website as easy to operate for people who are looking for gear to get into backpacking than backcountry for two big reasons. Number one, the way that they filter for being able to search for things is super awesome. You can literally narrow down to the most minute details, color, weight, all of those things to be able to find exactly what you're looking for. And number two, they have a chat function that allows you to talk to people that actually know what they're talking about. They're former Olympians, former athletes, former trail guides. They know their stuff and they're able to help you instantly find exactly what you're looking for or actually suggest things that can be better for you. So Backcountry did give me a coupon code. It's DANB15 for 15% off. Some exclusions do apply, but you can try it out and hopefully it will save you a couple bucks. Okay, this last piece of gear, uh, some people are going to be not happy with me about that I am saying that I never should have bought it. I'm just gonna say it. Uh, I never should have bought a hammock as a shelter. Now I've used hammocks probably a hundred different nights uh, over several years and um, they are great for some people. However, uh, when I switched to a tent, <laughs> I realized that um, it was so much more room. I could spread my stuff out. It's an actual living space. And the reason I switched to a tent originally was because I started bringing my kids with me. And so I needed to have a place with myself and them because they much preferred sleeping with their dad than often some hammock somewhere else. So, um, I started to realize how great sleeping on the ground actually could be and how comfortable you can actually be. As a matter of fact, I've made a couple of videos about it. I'll put one right up here for you guys to check out. So I actually sleep way better in a tent than I ever did in a hammock, and I just love it. So this one's the Big Agnes Copper Spur. If I was gonna pick one tent for the rest of my life, this would certainly be it for a lot of different reasons. It's fully freestanding, it's double wall, it's made by Big Agnes, so you're not gonna go wrong, and it's just super spacious and comfortable and very lightweight. So um, for that reason, I probably should have just bought a tent. Now, again, I'm not saying that you shouldn't buy any of this gear or that it will never work for you. Some of you may want to switch from a tent to a hammock because you're gonna find out it's gonna sleep way better than you ever thought. <laughs> but for me, this is the gear I never should have bought. All right guys, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe for more, hit the bell notification so that I can send you a video every single time it comes out. And I will see you on the next one.